customer wanted to change. Thank you, Kurt. Sure. Kurt's Yoink. filming now. Customer Yoink. is going to change his 4900 chassis. He picked up one that we had rebuilt, and he forgot how he took it out because it was months ago. So it occurred to me, I'm going to teach all of you now how to take out and put back in your Wells Garner 4900 chassis. They're all slightly different, but I'm going to tell you what you need. You need a quarter inch nut driver. You'll need a cutters. This is when, you, when the game is fresh, and I'll show you why. You're going to need a straight screwdriver. And lastly, a piece of wire this long with bare ends on each side. Now, I'm doing this, but ideally, you'll have an alligator clip on each end. But this is since most people don't have that, I'm going to show you how easy it is. And we're going to do a spy hunter here. Now this chassis we already fixed, so I'm actually taking this back out to show you so you understand everything that's involved, okay? Now the first thing you're going to do is we're going to discharge the tube. So you, obviously you're working on a machine with the power off. There's no discharge necessary in many cases if the tube has been sitting for months without being turned on, but this way you can be assured. You wrap the bare wire around your screwdriver, and then you put this part of the bare wire in any piece of the metal on the chassis or on the surrounding thing. And then you slide this underneath the rubber cap until you hear it. You will hear something go zip, and that'll kill the high voltage. Now, if you feel a little uncomfortable about it, you can, well, that popped right off. But there, see the two clips that clip in there? You can do that just to feel if you feel a little safer. And then you can always stick this in here to make sure it's discharged. Now, the 4900s are supposed to automatically discharge. And that's what this black wire is, and that's what the cutters are for. All right, I'm done with this for good. So, see, we only needed that for a second. But I'm now I'm going to show you what you do. This black wire right here is normally completely solid, and it gets soldered here. When we, we come across these chassis that have never been removed, you have to cut the wire, and then you're going to strip it and wire tie it when you put it back in. So that's the only place you cut a wire, is the return black ground. And then you're going to need a wire nut later. Then you unplug the neck board. Now this one's really, really tough because the cable plugs in back here. Can you zoom in back there? Because this particular monitor chassis is in differently in the Spy Hunter. So you may have to unplug that cable from the back. You don't have to worry because it's keyed in such a way that the three, see the three holes here and there's a separation for the fourth hole. Plugs way back here. You may or may not have to do that. In almost every case you don't have to. It's not stretched like this one is for this installation. Now, we've done that part. Now at this point we're going to need to find a quarter inch nut driver I fell. Here it is. Ah, good. The only thing... <laughs> We're going to be using that to take these screws off on the side. Actually, I think I'll, I'll take the rest of the disconnection first. All right. You unplug the degaussing. Okay, that goes to this black ring. Show, show this ring here. Every monitor on planet Earth, every TV set on planet Earth, has a degaussing ring. The degaussing ring only turns on for a second when you first turn your TV first on. And it clears up all the colors and, and uh, uh, makes the color pure again. And if it doesn't work, you use a degaussing ring. But that's the beauty of this. It's an automatic operation. It doesn't matter which way you put a degaussing plug back on. Okay, that comes off. Now this does matter. This is your data from the Spy Hunter game. You have to carefully unplug that. Now, do you see this here? This plug here and this plug. This is the color and the ground. You can see the red, green, and blue. And this is the sync connection. So when you plug it back on, you can actually do that and plug it in wrong. See, there's leftover pins. So you want to make sure when you return this plug that you're doing it just right. You won't hurt anything and the picture just won't be right. Okay, next, you unplug the yoke. Now in this case, the yoke plug is supposed to be one solid piece. In this case, the yoke was actually cut in half by some operator at some point, and I'll tell you why. 
The yoke is normally a four pin plug and it's done in such a way there's three and then one further apart like the smaller plug. Now I don't know if this might be of interest to you. If the plug is cut in half, you can actually reverse one and plug it in and that will turn the picture on the screen inside out and if you do this, it'll turn the picture upside down. So you can actually fool around with how the picture is oriented on the screen without physically moving the yoke, which you don't want to do if you can help it because that's all been uh, adjusted and get the color in right. Do you see this bead of rubber? That is locking in the ring. So this, this yoke is focused for this tube and you don't want to disturb that if you don't have to. Oh, God. Hey. Oh, I always dropped the camera. Uh, oh, God. Uh. It's Saturday night, we should be home. Okay, all right, let's continue. Okay, now, power plug is over here. Okay, it's two prongs. In almost every case, it's, it's a certain way, but it, this, once again, this doesn't matter. But I have found in a lot of cases, the original plug is cut off and they just have them twisted together, which is perfectly safe. Okay, all right, now, now what I do is I normally, so it doesn't get jammed up, I usually wrap this around the neck of the tube just to get it out of our way. And then our last step is to remove these two quarter inch nuts. Now, of course, if you're lucky, screws. Kurt, screws. Oops, I'm sorry, Kurt. Sorry. Now, if you're lucky, you have a magnetized piece, but Kurt, no, Kurt couldn't have a magnetized one. Could you don't need a magnetized could one, come on. Oh. Anyway, there is the two. Come on, come on. This is what happens with it. Ah, I did. <laughs> Here's the magnetized one. <sighs> okay, now it slides off. Did you see how the little plug is here? And that's a standoff. Now, here is your chassis. Oh my gosh. <laughs> see, ideally we'd go and refilm this, but we're not going to. Now, I want to show you what we have done to the chassis. So you can see. We've changed all the caps already, okay? So all new capacitors are in it. We've also reheated these two resistors, which is what you should do because they start to rock around. But this is important. You have to reheat the data pins on the back side. So you have to sit there and reflow solder along these two. That's critical because your picture could be in sync, it could be out of sync, in sync, out of sync. You do all that and then you're as good as new. Now... And your colors. And your colors. Your colors your could colors. shift. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, uh, th th what a terrific chassis this is, but this is the screen. That's your brightness, your master brightness and your focus. But then there's other things. It's your horizontal hold. They call it shift, but it's horizontal hold. Your size of your vertical picture. This one's the vertical controlling when the picture rolls. Remember those old TV shows where the picture was rolling? Uh, I remember a Mission Impossible episode where they made the picture roll so they could uh, sneak in a still picture. Very really clever episode. We have another brightness knob over here and another horizontal uh, control, which, which are untouched usually. And, uh, okay, now we do a reverse. Now we're going to show you putting it back in. The first thing you do is you put your two screws in. One now. <laughs> <laughs> A lesser man would break down. Right, Kurt? Mm -hmm. Good. Well, now. So we put that in first. Now, just just so we don't waste time looking, I'm not gonna, we'll put the other one in another Ooh, time. It's damn it. We haven't done anything to this poor game. It still has that crappy power supply in it. So, yeah, it yeah, actually has, see? Nice. See the old battery has leaked all over the place. We haven't done anything to this yet. Now, then you plug your data in very carefully, very skillfully. See how skillful I am, right? Magic. Here we have this black ribbon. Let me move that out of the way. And you double check it. It takes one second to double check. Plug in your yoke, like so. Doesn't matter which. Now in the case, uh, that's not your yoke, that's the degaussing ring. And no, I'm not going back and refilming. I've had enough. We, we, we've got to get out of here. Now, because, because this was cut, I'm going to match up the original way it was made. Oh, okay, that's even better. Look at that. 
So I'm going to plug this one in first, the bottom two, and the top two. You won't have to do that. It's even it's really good that this is showing you a cut plug because if you encounter a cut plug, when you take your plug off, you know what? I'll have the top one in first, won't I? When you plug your top one in, you may have to duplicate it because it's possible your picture tube is oriented different, especially if it got changed. So now we have that incorrect. Now, because of the way it's stretched, we're going to have to plug this in first. That's your, your now. Notice, see, you can't screw this up unless you're really stupid. Now, there is one occasion where you can. You see this? This is plastic. We've encountered these where the bottom is broken or, or cracked or the plastic's missing. If that's the case, you have to carefully make sure you match it up. But I'm going to give you a little secret. In every, every instance, this rectangle is absolutely squared up with the picture tube. So if you were trying to plug this on and it was going to end up like that, you're doing something wrong. It's always going to be this way. It's always going to be the long end matching up to the long end of the tube. Now in this case, we're going to plug this data plug back in here. As before, you probably won't have to disconnect that. Okay, but that's it now. Now, your next step is the return ground. Now because you've cut it, you have to make sure that you switch it. Now listen, this is not earth-shatteringly critical, but this return, th this is what actually helps uh, kill the shock hazard of the uh, tube. So you want to put that on, and where did I put the wire nut? <laughs> and the wire nut. Now, of course, you can use an instant connect. You can cover it with electric tape. You don't have to put a wire nut on. We just do that. Now, that knot is actually in there on purpose to take up some of the slack. You know, so you, you may want to make sure it, it's not critical. See, they make plenty of extra. Um, this is the tough part. See, it's making sure your hook is in right now. I will point this out. Some people feel more comfortable about discharging the tube one more time. After they're putting it back in, if you feel safer about it, it takes one second to do it because you already have this made up. Make sure the metal's touching and you're going to touch that. And that, that way you'll feel safe. Nothing will go wrong. Uh, the charge with the machine turned off, the charge cannot hurt you. Uh, it will not give you a heart attack. It'll just startle you. And you won't like that. Now you're going to hook this in. Am I going to have trouble hooking that in, Kurt? Oh, there we go. Good. Maybe you. Good. Now it's in tight. Wow. Good. That went quick. That went quicker than I thought. And then, of course, your final thing is your power. And once you get it hooked up. Now, hopefully you haven't bumped anything, but you may have to make adjustments. Now, we suggest a mirror. Somebody holding a mirror for you, and then you can adjust your brightness and focus first. That's the first thing. I want to point you out some a really nice feature. Do you see these pins? These are preset. These are master overrides for shifting your picture this way and shifting your picture this way. See these here? You can shift your picture left and right, and you can shift your picture up and down just by pulling this off while it's on and touch it or touch it and have somebody tell you, oh, the picture's going left and right, up oh, the picture's going up and down. That's a master centering adjustment for both horizontal and vertical. Really clever of Wells Garner. We, that, you know, we love Wells Garner, but you know what? Um, uh, Electrohome does that too. Electrohome has that feature, which is a very nice feature. Um, Don't cross them though. <laughs> Don't mess up those two wires. Uh, and it, well, no, you wouldn't do that because you're, uh, well, most of our customers won't do that. And the, oh, was that you that just got up? Yeah. Oh, God, I heard that. Tired. Oh, my gosh. You know, now, I'm a, now, Kurt, there's two questions. Should I bend over and try to find the screw for the other side, A, or B, shall I just get up and, and let's go home? I think it's time to go. You did your job. Nice job. Well, now everybody learned something. That was for our, our one customer putting his game back together tonight. His Zaxxon. Mm -hmm. Sega Zaxxon. A great game. And he's going to have his picture up and running. But listen, here. Ah! Oh, oh, oh. oh. I'll get the light. Oh, gosh. 
How am I going to get that? Get it Monday. Monday. See Good you. night. Good night. Now get out!